of you write. Scene 1, 1870, Cheltenham, Pennsylvania. Lucretia Mott in front of her full-length mirror inside her bedroom. She wears a white flowing dress. Yes, ma'am, your guests have just arrived. Make them comfortable, I'll be down in a moment. Agnes walks quickly down the long cascading staircase to the regal entrance. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, my name is James Faraday. Is this the Lucretia Mott residence? Yes. Yes, it is. Good evening, madam. My name is Frederick Douglas. I'm here to speak with Lucretia Mott. Is she available? Hello, Mr. Douglas. We've been expecting you. Please, come right in. Please, come right this way. I'll relieve you of your hats. You gentlemen can make yourselves comfortable. Refreshments will soon be served. Mrs. Mott will be right with you. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Lucretia enters the parlor. If that will be all, Agnes. Yes, ma'am. Lucretia Mott. Frederick Douglas. Mr. Douglas, I have had been, I have, you and I have attended countless conventions together. It is my great honor to finally make your acquaintance. Thank you for coming to meet me on such short notice. The pleasure is all mine, Mrs. Mott. By the way, this is my associate, James Faraday. Ma'am. Now, if you'll excuse us, Mr. Faraday, Miss Mott and I would like to speak in private. Certainly, sir. If you need me, I'll be right outside. Pleasure, ma'am. Please take a seat, Mr. Douglas. Mr. Douglas, I am not one to mince words, and if you don't mind, I'd like to get right to the reason why I've asked you to my home today. Oh, by all means, please do. I am well versed on your long list of accomplishments. The eloquence of your literary works, the success of your daily newspaper, the North Star. What is it? Uh, right is of no sex. Truth is of no color. God is the father of us all, and we are all brethren. Will your persistence in advocating for land reform, the abolishment of capital punishment, public school desegregation, and mostly the way you consciously agitate the American awareness when fighting for full equality for Native and Black Americans is quite impressive. And you are not only a man of impeccable intellect, but your proficiency in leadership and uncanny ability to command are, on an open stage are unmatched. Which brings me to the reason why you're here. Is there a way you can capture that same fire that burns within you, combine it with the same reverence of fighting for the people who can't or won't fight for themselves, and dedicate yourself fully to my women's suffrage movement? I thank you for that, Miss Mott. Response, I'd like to. Oh, sweet Jesus! Enter! Agnes and Thaddeus enter carrying a silver serving set with all the trimmings. <laughs> Thaddeus placed a tray in front of Frederick. Thank you, sir. Uh, and thank you, sir. Thank you for everything you do for our people, from everyone in staff. Is there anything else we can get you, ma'am? Uh, and for you, Mr. Douglas? What I'd appreciate are no further interruptions, Agnes. Yes, ma'am. I apologize for the interruption. Trust me, no apology is necessary. Let me start by offering my deepest condolences on the passing of your husband. I've met James on a few occasions, and he's always proven to be an honorable and God-fearing man. He was married to a God-fearing woman. Uh, and for the record, I've kept a keen eye on the fine work you've been doing as well. Everything from your being elected the first president of the American Equal Rights Association to your speech at the world's anti-slavery convention calling for the emancipation of black people to your audacious discourse I personally heard you deliver at the Seneca Falls Convention to publishing your sermon to the medical students discourse. I applaud you for all of your efforts, but as for your request. Is there an issue? Like yourself, I'm also not one to pull punches. Frederick points to a bottle of brandy on the mantel. Would you mind terribly? No, not at all. I'm glad you asked. I like a strong drink as well. He pours them both a drink. To women's rights. Now, where were we? Yes. 
While I totally concur with your positions on your female anti-slave and women's suffrage movements, in my humble opinion, there is nothing more significant than the, than the abolishment of the cruel and inhumane treatment of black and red Americans in this country. The black man has endured almost 300 years of slave slavery only to be hoodwinked and to believe in equality and freedom were on the horizon. 40 acres and a mule were promised to us, but all that's been received is the inheritance of fear. Thousands of black men, women, and children murdered, raped, and hung by their necks while our predators suffers no consequences by the law. In your speech at the Declaration of Sentiments, you stated, and I quote, you could not accept the right to vote as a black, if, as a black man if women could not also claim that right. And, and stressed, the world would be a better place if women were involved in the political sphere. And because of these powerful words, the resolution was passed. I was also quoted as saying the discussion of the rights of animals would be regarded with far more complacency than would be a discussion of the rights of women. And I truly believe that. But I also echoed my belief that suffrage for the black and red man is significantly more dire. As I also believe that if you come on board to support my women's suffrage movement full time, we can hurl a two-edged sword at not only the oppressors of your people, but of mine. Oh, have you any idea how strong we can be if we join forces? Wait, so, uh, is your position that the work I'm doing concerning the improvement of millions of black lives pales in comparison to the importance of your women's suffrage project? Do you believe I'd even give serious consideration to abandoning my agenda for yours? Mr. Douglas, I'm not suggesting you abandon anything. I am just asking that you make yourself available to us when we call upon you. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's money you're concerned about, I received a very handsome dowry after oh, James's death. Money? What? You think it's money that defines me? And what about my people? Where would that leave us? Black men will still be hunted down and killed like rabid dogs in the street. Black women will still be raped. Black children will still remain orphaned and uneducated, and another generation of my people will be regarded as inferior beings. So I, I, I take it that this is all satisfactory to you as long as a white woman gains the right to vote, to get better jobs, and who knows, maybe even one day run for president of the United States. Frederick, right, right. let's not be close-minded on this. You have to crawl before you can walk. How dare you preach to me about crawling? My people have been on bended knees begging for scraps at master's table since 1619. And lest we forget, it's not just the white man's boot on the throats of freedom. Quite a few white women continue to play a healthy role in our oppression as well. Now, are these not some of the same women you'd have me risk everything to assist? Besides, last I heard, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony jumped ship and decided to go with George Francis Train. How's having that dowry working out for you there? Touche, Frederick. Touche, indeed. Please accept my apology for allowing the subject of money even entering this discussion. I realize that you're a man of great integrity. I apologize. Lucretia pours them another drink. Please allow me to ask you an honest question, Frederick. Are we all the same? I mean, are, do you think all white people are the same? There are multitudes of white people that have regarded enslavement and, and the indecent assault of black women and the assassination and destruction of the black family as a detestable thing. And some, including the white lady before you, have risked their very existence to do everything within their respective power to effect positive change regarding the lives of black and red people. Some of us have even been doing it before Frederick Douglass was even heard of. And many, including a few who sat in that very chair that you are sitting in right now, have been raped, murdered, and lynched right alongside the disenfranchised <coughs> that you fight for. For six months in 1843, I traveled with the American Anti-Slavery Society's 100 Conventions Project, where we traveled meeting halls throughout Eastern and Midwestern United States. Um, one night, I'll always refer to as the Night of Terror, we were in Pendleton, Indiana. 
From the moment I stepped on the stage, a group of slavery supporters did and said every vital thing they could to try and disrupt my speech. For security's sake, I wrapped up a little earlier than usual, deciding it best to leave that town as quickly as possible. As I left the stage, a group of young men chased me. I ran. I fought with all my God-given strength. I, with all the God-given strength I had, but it was too many. there were too many of them, and it proved not to be enough. They beat me mercilessly. When I came to, my broken hands were bound behind me, and they were fixing a noose around my neck. I witnessed a vertex of hate in the eyes of those people that eclipsed all the detestable things I've seen in my life. And then out of nowhere, boom, boom! Two of the most pleasant sounds I've heard in my life came from shotguns being held by a Quaker and his wife. They trained their barrels on those miscreants, demanding my release, thereby saving my life. So the answer to your question is no. All white people are not the same. I sometimes wonder where we'd be without the assistance of those of you who continue to stand by us. And while I agree that hatred toward the black and the red man by the masses of white-skinned people permeates the very air we breathe, you, dear Frederick, have no idea how many of us not only support you in everything that you do, but are ready, willing, and able to fight by your side, but to succeed in this battle. We have to band together and continue to support each other's respective fights. Look, I am well aware of the positions of the conditions in the South, is, and as grim as, as it most definitely is, believe me when I say that your people are progressing in a more positive direction. And as God is my witness, as long as I have air in my lungs, I am going to do, continue to do, do and continue to do any and everything I can to assist in keeping that momentum going. So you have my commitment. All I am asking for is your commitment in return. With your help, black and white women will get the right to vote. And from that, black and white women will gain the right to receive a better education. And with that education, support their families. In my heart of hearts, I believe women of all colors will one day earn the opportunity to become the sole supporters of their families. And who knows, maybe even outperform their husbands. And with any luck, maybe even become president of these United States. Frederick reopens the bottle of brandy and pours them both another drink. Lucretia Mott, I stand before you an enlightened man. <clears throat> the, enemy of my, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You have my support. <sighs> A drink among friends. A drink among friends. They clink glasses. Fade to black. 